Hello everyone and welcome to my studio. I'm Trish Crosby and today I will be showing you how I painted this simple rose that came from my garden this morning. I finally figured out how to overlay a photo onto my videos so I've placed the reference photo up in the corner for you guys. I hope that helps. I'm also going to be exaggerating the colors of this rose for this painting. I want the colors to pop for this video presentation. And one of the wonderful things about being an artist is the creative process, where you have the freedom to decide what you do in a painting and what the result will be. For each of these petals, I'm just filling the petal with water to saturate each petal so the pigment can bleed into the water. It's a simple process, it's not hard to do. You just let the colors flow where they want to go. The color will only flow to the edge of the water so you can keep some control. As you can tell, I'm moving around to petals that aren't next to one another. I'm doing this to make sure the colors don't bleed into each other and so I can keep some crisp edges on the petals. One of the things that I had to learn through a lot of trial and error is how fast my paper dries. Living here in Georgia, my paper dries really fast. The drying time will also vary greatly based on the type of paper I'm using. I don't know about you guys, but I have ruined countless pieces of paper just trying to figure out how each of them performs. But as you guys know, with any talent, it takes a lot of practice. So when you see an artist or you admire an artist's work, please understand that there was a lot of time, trials, aggravation, frustration, and self-doubt that went into their painting. And each one is a piece of their soul that they are sharing with you. I saw an awesome quote yesterday and I thought I would share it with all of you. It says, We make art to connect, not to stroke our egos, not to win awards, not as bragging rights or achievement, not to compete, compare, or replicate, not to pretend. We make art to connect to others, to memory, to ceremony, to the earth, to water, to the deep fire within, to our own energy, in the waiting wings, waiting, we make art to connect to life. I thought that was beautiful, so I thought I'd share it. It was written by Victoria Erickson. She's an author of Rhymes and Roads. I didn't read the book, but I did see the quote, so I just thought I would share it with you. For this painting, I'm using my favorite Match Japanese Professional Watercolors and Arches 100% cotton paper. I actually flip the paper over because one side has more texture than the other. And one of the perks of Arches paper is that you can paint on both sides of the paper. So if you have a painting that you really don't like, and you don't want to waste paper, you can just flip the paper over and paint on the other side. I 
I'm not sure if you guys can tell, but my paper is drying pretty quickly, considering it's roughly 75 degrees here today. Even in the winter, my paper dries really fast, so I can move from one petal to the next without any real problems. If you need your paper to dry faster, consider buying a heat gun. I have one linked in the description box below and it's very reasonably priced. It just helps to speed up the process. Any of the links that you see in the description box are products that I used in today's painting. I also have a link to my storefront where I am slowly adding all of the items that I recommend. I'm a registered Amazon affiliate, which pays me a small commission on any product sales using my links. This doesn't affect the price that you pay for any products. It's just a way for me to not be a starving artist. <laughs> so thank you for your support. I got up this morning and went out to water my rose bushes and I saw some really pretty roses and I just had to paint them. My rose bushes are yellow knockout rose bushes. As you can tell in the reference photo, they have a pink hue to them. The yellow roses start out a very saturated yellow. As the flower ages, it turns more white and just before it fades completely, it has this beautiful pink hue on the tips. Do any of you guys have knockout rose bushes? They're my absolute favorite. They're just so easy to care for and each day I spend time outside plucking off all the dead rose heads so that the rose bush will produce more roses. The yellow ones are especially fragrant and so they're my favorite. But I also have a bright orange double knockout rose bush that I'll be painting in the future. For the center of this rose, I'm using some burnt sienna and some Payne's gray. I'm using the Payne's gray in the very center to make it darker. For the shadow colors, I mixed up some yellow green, burnt sienna, and some ultramarine blue. And I watered it down so it would just be a hint of color. I mixed up two different shades for this. One is more on the green side and one is more on the blue side. I'm using the blue shade where I want a darker shadow and I'm using the green shade to give some depth. So as we come to the end of this painting, I realize it's not perfect, but it is not supposed to be perfect. It was just supposed to be fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel and be sure to hit the bell notification if you would like to be notified of any of my future videos. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day and a fantastic week. See you in the next one.